Hi there Kia owners, today in your 2022 Kia Telluride, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Red Arc's Tow Pro Liberty trailer brake controller. Adding a brake controller to your vehicle will allow you to apply the brakes on a trailer that you're pulling behind you. This is particularly useful when you have a larger, heavier trailer because your vehicle brakes are going to be doing all the work if your trailer doesn't have any. So you might have that extra three or four thousand pounds that you're pulling behind you and your vehicle's doing all the stopping. That's going to cause a lot of extra wear on your brake components. It's going to cause a lot of heating. That really leads to warped rotors. That feeling you get when you're driving down the road and you hit the brakes and all of a sudden and then it's off. Stops once you let off the brakes. And a lot of that's caused by, uh, by excess heat. So we can eliminate that and, and shorten our stopping distance by putting brakes on the trailer or having a trailer that has brakes and using a brake controller to apply those. The brake controller will take the stop signal from your vehicle and it'll use that to determine when you're pressing the brakes in the vehicle so it can send an output to the brakes on your trailer. This particular brake controller is a proportional brake controller. It's what I would recommend for most users out there is to get a proportional one. And what this means is there's an internal inertia sensor inside of our brake controller module. So when it receives that stoplight signal from the vehicle, letting it know, hey, it's time to stop, well, now it needs to determine how hard to apply the trailer brakes. And that's where that inertia sensor comes into play. That detects your movement. So it knows that you're moving, then all of a sudden you sit the brakes and it feels that pull forward as the vehicle wants to slow down. The module uses that inertia movement to then relay a signal back to your trailer brakes to apply it appropriately to match. There's a sensitivity adjustment on there, so you can dial that in to work with that inertia sensor to get the most natural braking experience. And this is what our brake controller looks like when it's installed. That's right, it's just this little tiny button here. The rest of our components is all hidden behind the dash. So unlike your traditional brake controller where the entire brake controller was mounted on a bracket right here, or maybe on the other side of your steering column, both, no matter which way you use those traditional ones, they're almost always in the way of your legs. Uh, I mean, I'm about 6'4", so no matter what vehicle I get in, you can see I got I have some distance issues and brake controllers really annoy me. This is great because this we've got a brake controller in here and I've got all the freedom in the world without having to worry about my knee bumping on my brake controller uh, and stuff like that. You've got full adjustment here with easy access, so it's still in a nice location where you'd have a traditional brake controller. We can still access all those things. It has all the uh, similar functions that you'd get out of a traditional brake controller, including our manual, uh, similar to your manual slide, but it's a button press. And you get feedback from the LED indicator that's behind it, letting you know whether you got a trailer connected, letting you know how much output is there. You can see it changes in brightness from blue to red, depending on that output that we send out. The module and all that can be mounted in any orientation. So if you want to follow along with us, we'll show you how to get that installed. We'll begin our installation here inside the vehicle on the driver's side. We need to figure out where we're going to mount all of our components. So this is what you're going to get in your kit. I've gone ahead and opened it up. You'll get your control module. You'll get your switch as well as the button and nuts to mount the switch. You'll also receive an ethernet style cable. This will go from your switch to your controller. So that way you can have this kind of mounted in a nice location and we can hide our controller. Some additional components we're going to need to complete this installation is this is the factory adapter for your Palisade. So if you've got a factory tow package on here, you'll have a connector underneath the dash. <clears throat> this will plug into that connector under the dash and give us all the necessary wires that we need to make our brake controller work. So you can get this from Kia, from your dealer. And then we're also going to need the Topro Liberty harness because the Topro Liberty doesn't come with its own harness. So you have no way to actually use it without purchasing this harness here. This is sold separately uh, and it's required. So you're going to need this. Uh, I don't know why they, they don't just include it, but it's not included. So make sure you grab this as well. This plugs into the controller here and it gives us all of our circuits here. These are just going to connect directly to the ones here from the factory connector so we can get everything wired up. First thing we need to do though is figure out where we're going to mount all this stuff. So we've kind of covered the pieces we're going to be using. Now we need to get to where we're going to put them. So we're going to be removing some panels here on the inside so we can hide the module. So I went ahead and I pulled the floor mat out of here. We're going to start removing some panels so we can get behind here to mount up our module. First panel we're going to remove is the piece along the side here. 
So I like to pull the weather stripping off. It makes it a little bit easier. So we're just pulling this up and just kind of just setting it off to the side. We'll then take the panel here next to the seat on the floor. We're gonna grab it underneath. We're gonna pull upwards on it. And we're just gonna work our way down the panel, pulling upwards to get that released. Now that we got that released, we'll set that aside. <clears throat> and we're gonna remove this panel here next. This panel here has a lever on it for your hood. So we'll need to release that. To release it, we're gonna use a trim panel tool here to just put a little bit of pressure on our switch, not putting a lot on there. And then there's just tabs here that we just need to press in with our screwdriver. We're just kind of pressing in on them and it'll just pop right off of there. We can then pull this panel off. You'll need to pull it out a little bit to clear where the handle was. And then you're just gonna pull it towards the rear to pop it off of there. We're gonna pull a little bit more of this off because we're gonna remove the panel that's on the side here. To remove this side panel, you'll see that there's a small notch down here at the bottom. We're gonna take a small screwdriver, stick it in that notch, and pry outward just a little bit. I'm gonna take a trim panel tool now, and we're gonna stick that behind there as well to give us a little bit more meat to get these to pop out, because this is kind of a flexible panel, and we don't wanna to push too hard with a really small tool because that could damage the panel. There we go, and we'll just set this aside. Now that should have revealed couple of bolts here. We're gonna take out this one right there. We're gonna use an eight millimeter socket to do so. And then if we go straight down from the one we just removed and in, you're gonna find one right here. We're gonna remove this with our Phillips screwdriver. After we get this one out, there's gonna be another one like this on the opposite side of our panel here. And you can see there's a little opening right here. That's where we'll find the other screw. So we're gonna remove it from there as well. All right, and after we've removed the screw from there, we can pull our panel off. We're just gonna pull outward on our panel here. And it just snaps right off of there. We're then just gonna drop it down. If you want, you can remove the OBD connector here. It's just two prongs, you squeeze in, and then you can push this up, and that'll pop off, and then you can set the whole panel aside. So now we're gonna go ahead and mount our module. We're gonna be putting it in this position over here next to our fuse box and zip tying it to the metal bracketry here. Before we put it up there though, we're gonna have the ethernet side towards the top and the brake controller side towards the bottom. The top here is gonna to be difficult to access once we mount it. So we're gonna put the connector on there beforehand. And this way we can kind of route the wire and ensure that uh, it's gonna be in place where we want it to be. And we may actually swap to the 90 degree one because uh, we should have plenty of room behind our paneling where we're planning on putting our switch. But I do like that they do give you a 90 and a straight, so that way if you've got kind of a depth issue with where you're trying to install something, you can put the 90 on that side to minimize its length a little. So let's see how this slides up in here, if this is gonna work out like we want it to. Okay, yeah, and that looks pretty good there with, uh, with the 90 degree going that direction. So now we can go ahead and get this mounted up. We're going to just use some zip ties to zip tie this to the uh, bracket that's right here. So I'm just kind of getting an idea of where these are going to line up. And then we're just going to run our zip ties through. We're just gonna put a few more zip ties around it to ensure it stays securely in place. So we got our module on there. We would, we'd used one zip tie here just to hold it vertically through this hole. And then we used two zip ties through the slots on the brake controller to secure it to the bracket here, making sure it's nice and secure. Cause we don't want that to move around cause there's an inertia sensor in there that detects the movement of the vehicle and we can get false readings if it's not secure. So 
We got that secure. Our wire then, we're just kind of run it down. We're then gonna run it over and we're gonna be mounting our switch over in this area. You could either mount it in this panel here that we took off and it'll fit through a little slot here or here um, on the sides or down below, wherever you want. There's plenty of room. Or you can put it right here. And this is where I think we're gonna be putting ours. It's gonna look a little bit nicer, be a little more out of the way and accessible over here in this location. And if we reach behind the panel here, we've got quite a bit of room here. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues with uh, um, running into obstructions. So now we're gonna mount up the switch. This is a washer that is gonna go on the outside here. Um, so we're gonna use this as our template because our switch needs to pass through the large opening and then it has a little alignment LED that goes in the small hole up top. So we're gonna just use this as a little template here, kind of line it up where we want it. Double check behind that panel, make sure that everything looks good. Might have to go, looks like I go a little bit lower and this looks like a pretty good spot right there. So now we're just gonna hold that in place. I'm gonna take a paint stick, make sure we get our LED at the top. We'll then mark out the hole that we need to drill. And then we'll take a pick and we're gonna poke that little spot in the center there, because you're probably not gonna get a paint stick up in there. And we can see the little mark that we poked right there. So now we'll know where to drill our holes. So now that we've got our panel marked, we'll use a 3 8 drill bit to drill out the larger hole. And then the smaller one, we'll use a 3 30 seconds drill bit. Make sure we get that lined up in the center. Now that we've got that drilled out, we're gonna double check to make sure everything's where we want it. This nut here needs to pass through. So that looks like it's a little tight there with that 3 8 drill bit. So it's probably due to like, it does a little bit of melting on the plastic and stuff and it makes it really tight. So we're gonna step it up one more size, drill this out and make sure that this nut passes through. Cause this is what secures the switch in place and this collar here actually goes inside the plastic. So we're gonna step that up just a little bit. And there we go, our nut fits in there properly now. If you got any rough edges like this, you could take a razor knife too and clean up, or you could just push them in there because our components are gonna cover all this up. So that looks good there. Now, before we drill out the small hole, we're just gonna double check ourselves for proper alignment. We're gonna set this over top of our hole there and just get an idea if our little alignment hole's in the right spot. And it looks like it's lining up pretty well. Looks like we're maybe slightly lower. So I might take my pick and just give me another mark at that spot just so I know we can kind of slide that down out of the way to see. We are just ever so slightly lower than our original mark. We were pretty close though. Our original mark is just right above that. So now we got it marked out. We know it's gonna line up. We're gonna switch over to that smaller bit and drill out that alignment hole. And drilling that guy out. So we'll once again check, because if we look at our gray collar here, the back side of it that's supposed to go up against this is actually raised a little bit right there. If you can see it's raised, that needs to poke into that little hole. So we may need to step this up a little bit bigger if it's, uh, again, because this plastic seems to be melting a little, just a little bit. So we might look like we gotta step it up just a hair to get that to properly fit inside of there. So we just moved up one more size to clean this up. Check our fit. And that seems to fall right into the hole there, kind of pivots on it. So it looks like we're good there. So now we can go ahead and get our switch installed. We're gonna go ahead and plug the cable in first because it's gonna be kind of difficult to get to this 
once it's mounted. And then we're gonna feed it in to position, making sure we line up our LED with our small hole that we had drilled. And it can be a little tricky to get this to all line up because it's in kind of a difficult to access location. There we go, we saw the LED poke through the hole. So now at this point, all right, so you might have some problems getting your LED in just because of the positioning and stuff like that. And this switch actually falls apart really easily. Um, it's unlike the Topro uh, Elite. The, the Elite has a much nicer switch than the one in the Liberty. The Liberty is actually kind of cheap. Uh, this plastic covering just comes off of there so easily. So you're trying to feed it in and the thing just kind of likes to fall apart. When it does fall apart on you, if that does happen, your LED indicator here is going to fall off. So we need to put the LED indicator back into place. To do that, that's our LED right down in there. Set this, there's two little prongs, those are gonna line up there, and then there is the LED there. It actually, the LED actually takes the light and it runs it down this clear shaft to illuminate there. And then you can slide these all back together. It's not easy because Everything just kind of sits together with this. It's nothing's really that secure. And yeah, this is really this the, kind of that's how you get it back together. At this point, you just got to take your time and get it all to line up. There we go. We got it to snap back together and you can see the shaft is poking through there so we'll get our LED light. So there you go, you saw how it comes apart. It does come apart extremely easy, uh, a little bit too easy in my opinion. It actually makes the installation quite a bit more difficult because of that. Okay, so we'll just get this back into position here now. You'll know you had, that you pushed it into because you can see the threads on your shaft here for your thing you're gonna lose some of those threads if it starts to come apart on you. And that's kind of what was happening while we had to pull it back out of there. Because if you're pushing on this thing, you can easily just push it up right apart. So now at this point, you would wanna take your gray washer and your nut and put those in place. Sometimes you need to omit the gray washer because of the thickness of your panel, maybe too thick, and you may not be able to utilize the gray washer because it may not uh, give you enough threads to actually mount the switch. We're going to attempt it and if it doesn't fit then we'll just take the washer off and thread it on without it. Okay so we did have to omit the washer. We weren't able to get a thread started with the washer in place due to the thickness of the panel. No big deal. It's not going to really affect anything without that washer there. We'll then take a 12 millimeter socket and tighten this down. And I'm just doing it by hand. We don't want to go crazy tightening this. It just needs to be tight enough to be snug so that way we can utilize it. Okay, that seems pretty good there. We're able to rotate it. We were able to tighten it down pretty well. Our LED indicator is still passing through. And that's plenty secure. We don't need to go any tighter than that. Next, we're gonna install the button. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the button, I'm just lining it up on there, I'm not pushing hard, and I'm turning it fully counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is gonna be our zero position. You could if you wanted to, you could turn it fully clockwise. That'd be your 10 position. So either, either one, it's up to you. Uh, we're gonna, we can leave it at the 10 here. We're then gonna take the 10 while it's at the top, if we're fully clockwise, and we're just gonna slide it into place. And that looks pretty, pretty close for our fully clockwise position there for 10, zero for fully counterclockwise. Now, after you slide this on, you need to make sure that the button can be pressed. You want to be able to have that audible click there because that's our manual control. If you don't have the audible click there, that's where you may need to remove that gray washer. Even if you were able to get it to tighten down, it may be taking up too much space and you may not be able to click 
the button. You can omit that washer to do so if you do have that issue. So now we're just gonna clean up our wiring a little bit. I've routed it down. We then routed it across, made a little bit of a loop right here at the module with the excess wire. And then we're just gonna zip tie it right over here in front of our module just to keep this stuff out of the way, kind of make things cleaner. So we're now underneath the dash. This is our fuse box right here, your interior fuse box, your airbag is just to the outside of that, and your parking brake, uh, I mean, your, uh, your hood release mechanism and those panels removed is over here. So just behind this fuse box, you'll see there's a connector taped to the factory harness here. That's your factory brake controller harness. So we've got that right here. We can just kind of, we don't need to pull it all the way off the tape. We just need to have it exposed like that. And that's where we're going to plug in that connector that we got from the factory. All right, so we've got our factory connector here. Now, one thing I don't like about this factory connector, if we look at it, one, boy, they really strip back a lot of wire there. There's way too much wire stripped back there. The other thing is, is once we plug this in, these wires are going to be live, and we don't want the ground and the battery positive wire to touch. This, was, uh, this is going to give you a little light show that you, you're not going to be happy about. So we're going to trim those back a little bit. Uh, we don't need nearly this much length of wire anyway. We're just going from that connector and looping up into our box here. So we're going to trim all these off to where there is no more uh, exposed wire there. So we don't have to worry about any issues when we plug that in. All right, so now that we get those trimmed back, we're at a little bit safer of a state to make our installation here. We'll now take the other end, and this is just going to plug right into this factory connector here. All right, we got those clinked together. We can go ahead and take our harness now for our red arc, and we can go ahead and attach it as well. So we're just going to plug that up into there. There we go. And we're going to just start connecting our wires. And what's nice about the factory connector here and the harness that comes from Red Arc is the wire colors are all standard. So it's just going to be color to color. White's going to be ground on both. Black's going to be battery positive on both. Blue is going to be the brake output on both. And red is going to be your stoplight signal for both. So that's super easy there. We're going to strip them back and crimp them together one by one. I'm going to start with the black wire because uh, this is our hot wire and we want to get this connected kind of ASAP here to ensure that we don't short anything out. So go ahead and starting on the module side because this side we know is not going to be live. Now we're going to go ahead and connect it with some butt connectors. Butt connectors don't come included with your kit so you will have to provide those for yourself. You can get some here at eTrailer if you need some. He's down now. Take our black wire here on the other side. You can slide those off there to get those out of your way. We'll strip this back and then connect it to the other side. All right, so now that we've made our connection there, we're just gonna continue on color by color, connecting them one at a time. All right, we've got all of our wires connected there. So we're just gonna take this excess here and we're gonna zip tie this up, hiding it behind our paneling here, keeping it near our fuse box wiring probably just zip tie it right there to that wire if you need some zip ties you can get some here at each trailer we've got plenty of different sizes available different lengths widths and load capacities and there we go that's pretty nice tucked up with the rest of our wires snip off some of the excess and at this point now, we're ready to reinstall our paneling in reverse order of how we removed it. 
and we're gonna hit the parking lot because this has to be calibrated by driving it in order for it to work properly. So now we've got all our panels back together here. We're ready to go calibrate our controller. If we look down here at our switch, we can see that it's flashing between green with an occasional blue kind of blip in there. That's indicating that it still needs to be calibrated as it calibrates the intervals between the green and the blue change and it will eventually light solid once it is calibrated. So we're gonna go drive it now to get it out of this blinking state and into the fully calibrated state. And it needs to be calibrated because this module, unlike regular brake controllers that just mount here, they're always kind of in the same position so it's easy for them to know which way is forward and backward. We can mount our module in just about any orientation we want, wherever we want here on the vehicle. So that's the purpose of this driving procedure, so it can learn, hey, how am I mounted in this vehicle so I can detect proper movement. So we're gonna hit the road now. We did plug in our test box to simulate a trailer. You don't have to to get it calibrated, but you really won't get much feedback from the knob here to know whether or not it's, it's finished calibrating unless you got uh, a trailer uh, with trailer brakes plugged into it. So we're gonna have that plugged in so we can get that feedback real time here. So now we just want to drive the vehicle. When we're driving straight, we want to get up to about 15 miles an hour, and then we want to hit the brakes. That's going to give it an event, helping it learn its position. And actually, just in the few brakes we've done, we can see that the interval here has changed, showing that we're getting closer to fully calibrated. We're actually having, it looks like, a longer on time of the blue LED and, a, and less on time for the red LED. This, I mean, sorry, the green one. So it's quite a bit different than it was before. We had a long green with a small blue blip. Now we have like a long blue with a small green blip. So now we're just going to keep on driving it to get it calibrated. It can take up to about 20 stops to get it calibrated. It does vary depending vehicle to vehicle and the conditions in which you're driving in. If you're at a really turny area where you don't got a lot of straight areas to stop and go it's probably going to take you a little bit longer versus an area where you got a nice wide open area that you can just go straight and stop a few times and give it good movement because it's really looking for that kind of movement so i'm going to go a little bit faster here we're going to hit it a little bit more aggressive just to get that inertia movement to get this calibrated so we're going to continue on now and we'll see you here once we get this all completed i'll let you know about how long it took us all right, so it only took us about maybe another minute, a minute and a half worth of driving and stopping to get that to fully calibrate. I'd say it was probably maybe like four more start-stop sequences, uh, maybe five, that got us here to this fully calibrated state. And we can see that it's blue. So now that it's fully calibrated, I've gone ahead and turned the knob all the way up to 10 to max it out. And I'm going to hit the brakes. Our test box that's simulating a trailer is right behind us, so we should be able to hear it, the load of the current from our brake controller, uh, applying to our test box. So I hit the brakes and here we can see it is putting out power to the box. If we turn it down, it sends less power to the box and the color of the indicator changes with it. You can see less or more and you can hear the box get louder as we put more to it. You can adjust your sensitivity using this knob all the way down to zero for minimum output, up to 10 for the maximum output for the most aggressive braking. You can still press in on the button to manually apply the brakes, just like you would with the slider on a traditional brake controller. You can hear that here at the back. This is also corresponds with your setting. So if you've got it set really low, you get almost nothing to the box. Hear a little hum. We go way up and there's full blast. You can really hear it singing back there. So we're going to go over to a trailer and hook up and everything. But I wanted to show you guys here what it looks like if you don't have a trailer disconnected. I disconnected the test box. We're getting ready to head over to a real trailer. If we hit the button here, well, first off, first thing you see is it's not lit up. It won't be lit up if you don't have a trailer connected. And then if we hit the button, you see the blue light will do kind of a swell and then go out. That is telling you, hey, there's not a trailer connected. So if you see that and you do have your trailer connector connected, you probably got a wiring issue. The connector may not be plugged in all the way, or you could have something going on with your trailer brakes, potentially an open wire, and the circuit's not detecting it. Uh, test boxes are great. We have test boxes we sell here at eTrailer that you can use to simulate a trailer so you can verify that your vehicle's working properly and you know that your issue's over on the trailer side. Let's get hooked up to a trailer now. And now with our brake controller all installed, fully hooked up, we've got our pop-up camper hooked up on the back. We're ready to take that out and experience a much smoother driving experience because we don't have that weight just pushing on us. Now we've got some assist from our brakes, so it's a nice natural stopping experience thanks to our Topro Liberty. And that completes our installation of Red Arc's Topro Liberty trailer brake controller on our 2022 Kia Telluride.